Well, essentially, what the the, <clears throat> the synopsis of what it was saying was, I don't remember the gentleman's name who podcast it was, but one of our listeners pointed out on some on somebody's podcast. Yeah. There we go. So Zach Rob Smith. Miller, Zach Smith had an interesting, yeah, interesting Smith, take uh, on his podcast, saying, "Yep, he believes the offense coaches see it as JJ Slob's to, job to lose, which is the first time I'm hearing of this." So this is interesting because. I can't see how it's the case because I think everyone, everyone agrees that JJ is a more talented quarterback. So from a coach's perspective, you're looking at who, which kid gives us the most options, uh, the most versatility at the quarterback position between JJ and Cade. Well, the easy answer is JJ. So if you're looking at it from that standpoint, you're like, okay, well, JJ technically should give us the most opportunity to win. However, he can lose his job if he makes mistakes. Essentially, JJ can only hurt himself, right? And and that's probably going to be making mistakes in camp. You know, trying to extend plays, trying to do too much, forcing certain passes, a couple of interceptions, maybe a fumble or two, right? And that could lose you the job, especially when you have a backup quarterback who is proven like Kay McNamara, where his biggest strength is, above all, this is uh, decision making, right? So I, I I I can see why that may be very true. Unless one of these two quarterbacks distinguishes themselves in camp and is so much better than the other quarterback, I think Harbaugh can make a decision and he can spin it the way he needs to spin it. If he's going to decide that Cade's still the starter. Cade's probably not going to make many mistakes in practice, and he's going to continue to make the right reads and do the right thing. But as long as J.J. just isn't a turnover machine, then he can also spin it that J.J. is just provides us a better opportunity to win with his skill set, provides us a better opportunity to win, even if even if he turns the ball over a couple more times over the course of a season, uh, you know, and, and turnovers are more about timing than anything. Yeah. Uh, turn it over three times against Hawaii, fine. Um, so it's 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 more about timing of turnovers than it is just the um, the total number of turnovers. But unless there's this huge gap between how they perform in camp, I think Harbaugh's got a, an out to determine whatever he wants to determine about this quarterback situation. I just think he better decide on the quarterback that he wants in game one, because if he wants JJ and he starts Cade, like we talked about in the past, I don't think that he is likely going to be in a justifiable position later in the season to bench Cade. Yeah. And it's, and to me, you have an opportunity to deal with JJ's growing pains because he's he's going to have some that he's just he hasn't been a full-time starter in college he's going to have some growing pains but you have the opportunity with your schedule to deal with those growing pains a lot of them at least um, early on in the season with no real risk of losing a game like the first three games you're not going to lose those games you you could probably have a decent amount of threes in that in that game and that obviously we're talking from an outside perspective a coach would never say that, so I want to be very clear. Um, but this is this this will be the opportunity if he does indeed go with JJ. That listen, you've got three weeks to to get it all out there, and of course, you're not going to get rid of every mistake right after after week three. I'm sure he's not going to have no interceptions moving forward, but you do have an opportunity with the schedule to be able to. You know, to to live with some of those growing pains. Go ahead, Mark. Yes, Looks I like agree you're... with what you just said because it's complete conventional wisdom, and I'm sure I have said the same thing 800 different times about these type situations. But did Trevor Lawrence have growing pains? Did Bryce Not Young really. have growing pains? <laughs> DJ Stroud <laughs> may I, have I had, that. may have had. So, so did Justin Fields have growing pains? No, he had the ground running. He had like four hundred plus yards. Did he have like? Did he like have he break a record his debut or something like that? It was some kind of record he broke. Yeah, Justin Fields went forty-one. No, he went 
39 and one regular season TD picks. And again, Bryce Young was roughly somewhere in that range, 44 mm-hmm. and four, whatever it was. That is true. So, I guess those special guys, you know, some of them don't well, have. I, I think it's that, but also I, I think, and you, this also, you, you see this in the NFL, on the NFL level as well. Um, I think just due to the repetition that these quarterbacks get nowadays going all the way down back to the, the high school level, the 707s, they're throwing so much more now that they're a lot more polished in terms of, you know, be able to make certain throws and stuff like that. So most of the learning curve is, you know, learning the playbook and stuff like that and, and, and developing, you know, chemistry um, with their teammates. But in terms of like their, their skill set, you know, and arm strength and all that stuff, you know, these kids are a lot more advanced uh, now than they were maybe 10, 12 years ago. Um, you know, they're a lot more ready uh, to, uh, to play. That's why, you know, you know, it, it, you shouldn't feel if a kid is really that talented, you know, you, you and you have a pretty high profile program, you know, you don't necessarily have to miss a beat if you start them. You know, um, I, like I, I think about last year with CJ, CJ Straw, you know, like. Me and Des were texting during the Minnesota Ohio State Minnesota game, and I I remember saying like, "Dude, he looks shaken," and he did look a little shaky. You could tell he quite didn't have his composure. It was clear as day that he was very talented, but he was a little bit shaky, and he got better throughout the season um, because his talent, you know, eventually took over. You know, and maybe 10, 12 years ago, it would have took him more than one full season, you know, more than a few games to get to find his rhythm, right? So. Um, I, I definitely believe that nowadays, you you know, you can win with a kid, a high talented kid, you know, uh, coming out of high school in their first year. 